Welcome to SPC Insights with Dr. Bill, simplifying SPC and statistical analysis. Today we're going to look at cause and effect diagrams, how to create one, and most importantly, how to analyze one. So what causes variation in the things we do? Getting to work on time. We always don't get to work on time at the same time each day. How come some reports have errors and others don't? How do we produce some product in spec one day, but not the other? The cause and effect diagram helps us figure that out. It summarizes the causes of variation and helps look for root causes of the effect, the problem or the goal, and it helps us prioritize improvement initiatives. And so it can be used on a problem or a goal, as we will see. So in this cause and effect video, we're going to introduce the cause and effect diagrams we're going to create a cause and effect diagram. And then the thing most people struggle with is how do you analyze a cause and effect diagram to get down to the root cause? And we'll show how to do that in this video. So introducing the cause and effect diagram, it shows the relationship between an effect and sources of variation in your process. Maybe the effect is your car will not start. So what, how come it doesn't start? Well, the engine could be too cold, there could be no gas, it could be a dead battery, many things. But the effect can be a problem or a goal. Problems, the car won't start, the goal, I have a car that starts. It can be used in any problem or goal in any department. How do we increase sales? What are the reasons for downtime, decreased waiting time, rework reasons? It can be used anywhere. Now, cause and effect diagrams have two other names. One is called a fishbone diagram because when they're complete, they kind of look like a fish. It's the shape. They are also named after their creator, Ishikawa diagrams. So you'll hear cause and effect diagrams called fishbone or Ishikawa diagrams. But what they do is organize data. Far too often we have unsystematic approach to solving problems. And what we want to do is rearrange our ideas into a systematic approach. And that's what the cause and effect diagram does. Usually use four M's of P and an E, the methods, materials, measurements, machines, people and environment. They don't have to be organized in those six major elements, but that's what we use and call them the four M's of P and an E. So how do you create the cause and effect diagram? Well, you start by drawing the bone. You pinpoint the problem or goal and you're going to write it at the head of the fishbone. Then you can select the categories for the causes of variation. We'll just use measurements, materials, methods, environment, people, and machines. And then you want to brainstorm detailed causes for each of the main cause. You can see there, there are quite a few on why a saw blade so usage. And you always want to keep looking for more possible causes. And sometimes the five whys can help you as you're creating a cause and effect diagram. So let's look at an example of the five whys. So you ask yourself why five times to try and get down to root cause. Why are you throwing sand dust on the floor? Well, because the floor is slippery. Okay, why is the floor slippery? Well, because there's oil on it. Well, why is there oil on it? Well, because the machine is dripping. Well, why is the machine dripping? Because oil is leaking. Why is oil leaking? Well, because the rubber lining is worn out. Voila replace the rubber lining. So you drill down to the root cause of the problem with the five whys. Now this is the one that's most important to many people. Analyze the cause and effect diagram. The first step in that is you got one here. We have the car will not start. It's time to analyze it now and you start by eliminating ideas. Ideas that really do not cause the variation. You keep the item on the diagram but you strike through it. For example we have car keys so we know no car keys is not a cause. We track it out. The next thing we have to do is ask how likely is it to be the cause of the problem? So that's for each item on here we want to say how likely is it to be the cause that the problem that the car won't start? Very likely? Somewhat likely? Or not likely at all? So for example no preventative maintenance could be very likely that that's the cause and we put a V for it. Too many miles on the car somewhat likely we put an S on it or the gas gauge is broken, not likely we put an in. So each item has that recorded for it on the fishbone diagram. The second part is how easy is it to verify that this is the cause of the problem? Very easy, like lack of training, you haven't been trained, or a dead battery, it's very easy to see. No gas, 
it's very easy. Engine overheated, it's very easy, or it's somewhat easy. So there's an S. Too many miles on the car, no preventative maintenance, or not easy at all, like alternator perhaps. So causes receiving VV responses, we want to investigate first. So the first thing we're going to look at, for example, is a dead battery because it had a V for both how easy is most likely it is to be the problem and how easy is it to verify the program problem. So you look at the VVs first. That helps you get down to root cause analysis. So in summary, we've looked at fishbone and Ishikawa diagrams, or the cause and effect diagrams, organized data in. In a systematic way, use the five whys, eliminate known causes, how likely it is, how easy it is to verify, and you start working on the ones with VV. So this has been a quick look at cause and effect diagrams. I pretty hope you enjoyed the video. For more SBC insights, click on the YouTube subscribe button. You can go to our SBC knowledge base online. We have over 200. Free publications on SBC and statistical analysis topics, or you can make your own cause and effect diagram using our SBC for Excel software. So visit our website, www.sbcforexcel.com. And again, thank you for watching the video.